Let's take a look at color inside of Corel Painter 12. First of all, let's make sure that we're looking at the same thing. In your color palette, go to your submenu, which is at the top right of the palette, and click on it, and make sure that if you have your color displaying as RGB, that you change it to display as HSV. HSV is your hue, your saturation, and your value. You can set these independently to pick any color you want. The hue is expressed on this hue ring here in Corel Painter 12, and it lets you pick any hue you want. And you can see if I move the slider bar, I can really fine tune this and get any kind of hue that I want. The saturation runs down the center of this triangle horizontally, and the saturation is basically how bright or how dull a color is. And you can see on the slider bar here, it kind of goes back and forth. The value is represented on the left side, the vertical axis of the triangle, and it goes from light to dark. And you can see you can move it on the slider bar here and fine tune it. So I made a little diagram here, um, which will kind of help break the hue ring into some different components to make it easier to understand. I have some of the primary colors listed here um, and where they are. In the spectrum of light, um, it kind of begins with red here, and then it ends um, in the ultraviolet area. Um, so you can really get pretty much any color of visible light that you want um, quite easily. What's interesting to note is that this is also set up um, how a uh, color wheel would be for artists. So your complementary colors are parallel, or they're across from each other. So the complementary color to yellow is indigo. It's a blue color here. So these are right across from each other. They're complementary colors. Same thing with magenta here and this aqua color. So any of these colors that are directly across from each other are going to be complementary. And just as well, um, if you get really into color theory, you'll know that um, there's also different combinations of colors that you can do besides just two, you could do three. So for instance, this magenta and this yellow and this aqua, these are all three complementary, and even this fourth one. Um, or likewise, you know, you could do these three colors, which are complementary. There's all kinds of different combinations that you can get into. Um, this kind of just kind of shows you where they are in relation to the hue ring. Um, I consider this to be about the midpoint here of the color. So these aren't really too um, important right now. It's just kind of um, a way to give you an idea of where these colors lie on the spectrum of visible light. Next, if we get a little more into it on the color wheel, here's a little more complicated chart. Um, I have these colors broken up into what I feel are some very helpful categories that'll help you decide which colors to pick. Uh, when you're choosing colors. So first of all, we have this uh, kind of red tinted area and this blue tinted area, and these are our warm and our cool hemispheres. So these, this from this green all the way over to this violet here, these are all fairly warm colors, and if you use these colors, um, it's going to make things more vibrant and more warm. The opposite of those are the cool colors, primarily cool colors, which are these here. And you can have some warm cool and some cool warm colors. There's combinations of each, but this is just kind of a general um, collection of colors that are warm and cool. And then we also have kind of opposite to that are the light and the dark hemispheres here. So these colors from red to cyan I see these as being a lot lighter, so if I was going to use highlights, I would probably shift more towards these colors. And if I was going to use shadows, I would more likely use these blues and magentas and violets and things. So you kind of have your areas. It makes it really easy if you know where to, where to hunt for colors. Um, they're a lot easier to pick. Also, you'll note there's some kind of um, polarities in the color that are opposite to each other. Um, as I mentioned, the yellow and the 
indigo are complementary to each other, but also you'll note the yellow is a fairly light color, and I have it indicated by this L here, and I feel that the indigo is a dark color. And you'll notice that in most cases, the light is opposite to the dark, so yellow is lighter, indigo is darker. Same thing over here, this cyan is lighter, and this red is darker compared to each other. It also alternates, it goes light, dark, uh, light, dark, light, dark. So there, it's kind of some swapping around of light and dark colors. Um, it's interesting to make note of that. When I'm choosing colors and doing shading, the reason why this is important is because if I make a new layer here, I'll just make something. Let's say my object's gonna be this orange color here. Maybe it's an orange even. So when I go to shade it, if I don't shift my hue at all and I just make my color darker, which I'm gonna do here for example, what'll happen is as I start to shade, um, everything will just kind of come out looking kind of monochromatic. It won't really have a whole lot of life and it'll be kind of dull. Versus uh, if I do another example here and I shade it differently and shade it by uh, changing the hue a little bit. It's just going to give it more life. So I have my original orange color here and then on the chart you'll see that I have this dark and light. So if I'm at this midpoint here and I want to darken my color, um, if I want to darken it besides just changing the value and the saturation, I'll, I can also change the hue to make it appear darker. So without adding any value, any darkness value, I'm going to shade this next example here. So let's sample this orange color. We're just shifting the hue to the left a little bit. And that's our shadow, and we'll shift it a little more towards red. Add some shading. Now let's add a highlight. So we'll take this yellow here, which is going the opposite direction from our original orange color to the right and we'll add a highlight. So I haven't used any value at all to make this shading here. I've only used hue, so you can see that there really is um, some lightness and darkness difference just between the hue regions here. And if you know where they are, it makes it really easy to give more life to your, to your shading. I'm not recommending that you only use hue to shade with, I'm just saying if you add that into your workflow, it's going to give your shading more depth and more character. So for example, if I was going to shade this how I would normally shade it, I'd shift the hue a little bit first, and then of course add some value to it, shift it a little more, add more value, and then same thing with the highlight, put it over towards yellow, add a nice bright highlight, then shift it a little more, and add some lighter value. You can see compared to these two, uh, this is top examples definitely shaded, you know, it doesn't look bad and if you want your artwork to have a kind of more flat, dull appearance, that's fine, but if you want something to kind of sparkle and pop more, you're going to want to do these hue shifts. So hopefully that's pretty clear here in these examples where I have um, have some little swatches here. So if this is your base color, going towards a darker color is going to darken your hue and going towards the lighter color is going to lighten your hue and thusly lighten your shading. Now I have these neutral cool and neutral warm areas because magenta compared to aqua I don't really feel is really lighter or darker and you also kind of get to this halfway point that divides these light dark light dark alternations so I feel like these are kind of uh, neutral polarity areas. They're definitely, one is definitely warmer than the other and one is definitely cooler. So I feel like they also kind of influence the bearing of all these colors. So the magenta is in the warm hemisphere here and the aqua is in the cool hemisphere. So I wouldn't say that, you know, one is necessarily dark and one is necessarily light. Um, but in relation to other colors, if you were starting from uh, you know, somewhere uh, over here as your sample color going to the right or to the left. Um, 
I would feel like this could this magenta could either be darker or lighter. It's kind of, you know, relative to how you use it. So that's the hewering. Um, let's get into the other component, which is this triangle here. And this lets us further refine our colors. So I have this broken into some segments to give you an idea of where to pick colors from. Because when you're going to pick highlights and shadows, or specific colors for specific um, shading, you're going to want to pick from certain areas in this triangle. Um, it's not just you know, hunt randomly for a color. That's not the best way to pick color. You, you want to have some educated guess as to where to go and then refine that. So we have our vertical uh, value axis, then we have our horizontal saturation axis. And the way I like to shade, as I mentioned before, is um, I like to, you know, be really specific about how I, how I tweak my colors and I like to kind of shift things in a way to make them um, just pop more. So I'll give you an example here. Let's do a red sphere. Go ahead and make it maybe something like this. So this is our base color. So if we want something, uh, if we want to shade something, the colors that we're going to pick um, are, are obviously not going to be anything bright, you know, because it's going to be a shadow. So it's definitely going to fall somewhere below the line of the midtone. The midtone is just the general middle color. So that's kind of what I picked. It's right around here. So this is about where we're at right now in as far as the color of this sample. So if I'm going to shade it, I have to go below this point on the triangle. Anywhere below this point is going to produce a darker color. Now, whether I pick from the left or the right is going to dictate how bright that shadow is going to be or how dull it's going to be. And generally I make my shadows duller because there's kind of less light going on there. Um, the intensity of the light um, being diminished kind of makes it look more dark and more natural. If you'll notice like at night if you're walking around things really aren't that bright. They're kind of all washed out in kind of one color. Um, and when you're out during the day everything really pops. Everything's really bright and really saturated. So if I pick pretty much any color from here on down, I'm going to get a good result for my shading. If I pick something that's more saturated, more towards the saturation side, and I do my shading, then I'm going to get a shadow kind of like that. And if I want to do a really bright highlight, I'll pick from over here, anywhere from the top or from the mid-tone up is going to produce a highlight. So I'll put a highlight on there. I'm going to do another example here so I can show you the difference between bright shading and dull shading. So for this example I'm going to shade going from kind of over here with some of these more dull colors. So I'm going to pick kind of a gray dark red for my shadow and then my highlight I'm going to pick something Kind of like this dull pink over here. So you can see the difference between these two examples now. Uh, we've got our bright one here and we've got our dull one here. What makes the difference is that in this top example I picked colors that were more over on this side and in this example here I picked colors that were more over here. Now there's this curve that kind of starts to happen um, when you pick colors and you want them to be bright, uh, if you want to follow a direction, I generally follow a curve that goes something like this. And that can be uh, further clarified by making an example here. Let's go with something like this. I'm just going to shade it real quick a little bit. Kind of show you how this works. So I'm going to take my color sampler tool and uh, when I hover over some colors and sample my color picker here is going to move around in my color wheel and serve my slider bar. So I want you to watch where these 
uh, values are on the HSV sliders and I also want you to watch where this little target goes and also where this uh, just pretty much where everything goes here so I'm gonna sample down here and you can see if I start to move around the target starts to move and you can see it's following a curve right that same curve that I described earlier that's this curve here so this is kind of the saturation curve. If you want something to be really bright, you're going to want to pick your highlights up here, and you're going to want to follow this line, this diagonal line here. And the further in you go towards this uh, saturation point, the more intense the color is going to be. And then, of course, you want to follow the opposite line, diagonal line back down. If you stay in the center and you don't go into this curve, you know, if your curve ends up being something like this, where it's really shallow, your color is going to be really dull. And I'll show you an example of that as well. I'm going to shade this one using dull shading. And then I'm going to sample over it and then again watch what's going on here with all of these settings. So my target starts out. See how shallow this curve is here if you're watching the target up here. It's a very shallow curve. So it's only really going in these colors here. So this shading is going to be duller. Now up here of course again if you watch that target again over here, the curve is a lot deeper. It goes in further, like in this example. So when you're picking colors, you want to follow this chart. And this kind of gives you some different descriptions of, you know, different categories of midtones and shadows and intensity and highlights and things. Um, you've got your color intensity axis, which is again your saturation basically. And you've got your lighter and your darker. Just kind of trash these examples here. So those are your saturation curves. Um, this again kind of just cuts out some of the extra stuff because I know that can be kind of confusing seeing all those labels. If I'm going to pick highlights, they're generally in this range here that's highlighted. And if I'm picking shadows, they're usually over here. Now that'll change a little bit. Sometimes my shadows might be here and, you know, sometimes I might pick highlights from over here. Nevertheless, this is going to be your midpoint where all your midtones are. And then your highlights are going to be up here and your shadows are going to be down here. It's pretty easy. And again, with saturation, if you want something to be really, really bright and really pop and be very vivid, you're going to want to pick colors that are in this range here. And again, if I, if I sample colors here, you can kind of see if you watch this target, it's right here. Watch, watch how it goes. It's following that curve, that same curve that I have illustrated here. So I know this is kind of a lot of stuff. Um, it probably can be kind of confusing at first and, you know, You'll have to kind of practice with it to figure out um, exactly what I'm getting at here. But the whole point of this is when you're picking colors, you don't really want to just pick colors at random. It makes it a lot easier if you know why you're picking colors. Um, and the reason why we're doing things like shifting um, to make things lighter or darker is primarily kind of aesthetically because it just makes the artwork pop more. But it's also kind of how light works um, in real life. You know, the wavelengths of light change, and so the color of the light changes depending on whether it's getting absorbed or reflected or what's going on around it. And so to make things look more naturally shaded, you're going to want to follow these principles. Um, if you want to make artwork that's abstract and doesn't look realistic, go against all of these things. Or if you're making, you know, expressionist art, or something with a lot of colors and you want to figure out you know which colors are complementary to each other well now you know you have an instant way of finding out 
you pick your yellow here, okay, what's complementary to it? Well, I look at my color wheel that I have here inside a painter, and I know that directly down from it is a complementary color, or um, a quarter of the way to that point is magenta, or on the opposite side is this aqua color. These are all complementary colors. So they're all going to look good together no matter what. Then you don't have to guess. You know what to pick. If you want to pick shadow, you know where to get your shadows from. Uh, if you want to pick a highlight, you know where to get your highlights from. And you know how to dull them and make them more gray or to make them really bright. So that's pretty much all you need to know about picking colors. And then other than that, you just have to do some observations in real life um, to match the colors that you want to get to, you know, your intentions. So... Hopefully this helps and it wasn't too confusing and you can use this to make uh, more interesting artwork with more character and more color.